Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Well, Hu Jintao's era is at an end in the Chinese Communist Party, but people in China are still talking about him, in particular because of one photo that's going around Weibo with Hu seeming to have tears in his eyes as he surveys the end of the 18th Party Congress. So here to talk today about that photo and why Hu might have tears in his eyes, we have Jason Ma and Karen Chang. So Jason, why did Hu have tears in his eyes? It's complicated. I think he has a lot of things to think about and his historical position, what he lost, what he gained, and what he will, he will do in for the remaining of his life. So many things uh, uh, happening just to his mind at that particular moment when he clearly know he lost the power in China forever. Yeah. So what about you, Karen? Well, I think it's, like Jason said, it's a complicated moment. I mean, you've been in this position for 10 years, but a lot of people are going to judge him by what he's achieved. And I think inside that uh, he knows that he wasn't able to deliver what a lot of people were hoping for. So let's talk a little bit about who Hu Jintao and what he achieved. Do you think uh, he achieved what he wanted to accomplish? Um, definitely not. But uh, the first question is, is he has anything to achieve? Or is he has a vision to do something I don't think he's a person with vision. And he um, is kind of a grow up like a technician. And uh, he's a very he's good student. Right? He's an engineer, graduated from Tsinghua, which is famous, uh, like a Chinese version of MIT. And uh, he was a kind of a, a person who kind of was chosen by Deng Xiaoping to be this position. And he personally probably even don't want to be in this position. And he was in the most powerful circle, the standing committee in the past 20 years. He was in the, the number one person in China for the past 10 years, but he didn't do anything with the vision. He just kind of as an engineer to patch all this system. 20 years is a long time to stay in the standing committee. Uh, it is, it is. And also, it's not like when, when you have a leader in China, it's not like Western democracy systems where you have a, um, a presidential nominee who really knows what they want to achieve. They have their campaigns, they have their um, policies with Hu Jintao and, and other Chinese leaders. Like Jason said, they put in that position. And uh, when he was delivering his five-year report, Xi Jinping later said it was a combination of discussions of, of very many, of um, a lot of um, officials. So it wasn't something that he could drive or he could put forth by himself as he was really constrained by the rest of the leadership. So couldn't have Fu Jintao have said no? I mean, if he didn't want to be the paramount leader of China, as you're saying, Jason, you don't think he wanted to do it. Couldn't he have not done it? Uh, I think this has to go back to his personality. And uh, um, he kind of uh, grew up like a pretty good kid. I mean, he, his mom died when he was seven. And his father died in his 40, when he was in his 40, was pro, in, 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 in fact, his father was prosecuted uh, to death by the Chinese Communist Party because uh, he was uh, considered as a rich people. They kind of hit rich people at that moment, although they like rich people right now. But uh, you can see kind of along his life, uh, um, he kind of always ran to this kind of uh, person loss uh, from time to time. And also, he's uh, considered as a nice person, very nice person and an easygoing person. He don't really personally have a very strong view in many, many different ways. And, uh, but he was chosen just because of this, because he don't really have a, a lot of strong views. So he can be the right compromise a lot, a lot of things. So when Deng Xiaoping chose him and it was put him in this position, I think there was an interview with a Japanese media. The journalist said, uh, he even said he personally don't want in this position, but uh, if he refused this offer, he may hurt a lot, a lot of people's career. So he accepted. Which accepting this uh, is a demonstration of his uh, personality. But uh, once he in this position, he also kind of uh, was pushing or pushed around by different kind of people, like by, by Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, early, and then by Jiang Zemin later, and then later on, like uh, in this time, I know um, by a lot of kind of uh, older generation of people. So he didn't really have his vision. So he don't really have a strong will. Meanwhile, he's easygoing or weak personality make him kind of accept a lot of opinions, then end up he don't really do anything in 10 years. But it seemed like you could argue that, like you said, Deng chose him because he had this kind of easygoing personality, so he'd be kind of compromise kind of person. But uh, it seemed like with Deng, with Mao, that they were very strong leaders, like strong personalities, and it brought a lot of disaster. Um, to China. So were they looking for people to not be that strong, to be kind of consensus candidates? 
Um, in fact, I mean, weaker leader can also be destructive. I mean, uh, doing nothing can also be can be disastrous. I mean, uh, we know he succeeded uh, Jiang Zemin. Jiang Zemin has the policy of the prosecuting Falun Gong, and uh, uh, under that policy, a lot of people kind of was killed for their organs. I mean, that's horrible things happened. He knew it. He knew it, and then he did choose to do nothing. Hu Jintao, did he support the persecution of Falun Gong? No, from the very beginning, he didn't really support it, but he just the person accepted and then carried on by people around him. He never, never see anything to stop it. And indeed, there is a kind of a very kind of perfect moment when uh, Bo Xilai was kind of the event was revealed. I mean, there is a perfect moment he can reveal this whole thing, clean him out of this uh, um, kind of horrible situation. But he didn't do it because he won't maintain the stability of or the reputation of the party. So in a lot of situations, he chose to do the weak thing, to choose to do things to maintain the party instead of choose to do the right thing to move China forward. So in this sense, his position in the Chinese history may not be good. Well, I don't think a lot of it was up to him personally, even though he was in that position. Basically, for Chinese leaders, um, this concept instilled in their mind is that they have to keep the party forward. And anybody who can threaten the future of the party, like Zhao Ziya at the end of 1989 during the Tiananmen uh, protest when he expressed support for the students he was basically cast away so a lot of the time it's if, if you have someone who wants to stand up and do something sticks their necks out stick their neck out right basically tall poppy syndrome you can't really be someone that that has that leadership after Mao Zedong and Deng Xiaoping there's so many competing interests that they would just crush you down so would you say that um for Hu Jintao's like entire career his uh overriding you know decision making process is to maintain Right, he's an engineer. I mean, basically, it's kind of he uh, just kind of uh, patching all these things. It's kind of a clapping system, and uh, he know he don't know which part uh, uh, he move will kind of uh, make the whole thing clapped. So all he's doing is uh, patching, 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 and uh, he didn't really have a lot of vision as a kind of a, because he was not a kind of run for this position. He just was chosen, and he was chosen because of he's a kind of a, a easygoing person. So everything decided. I mean kind of his personality uh, and the environment, the political kind of uh, uh, procedure, everything decided he, he really cannot do anything during this process. He chose to not do anything during this process. So is he constrained by the system or could he have broken out of that? I think he can. If he is kind of a, a person with a stronger uh, right and wrong kind of concept, uh, he can break it because he's the number one person. And, but the problem is he really don't really kind of want to do it or he don't really have the willpower to do it. So. And also, also that I guess he doesn't want to have that title of the person who brought out the party. He may, it's probably that fear holding him back. You know, there's, you really need um, assertiveness and boldness to make that kind of change and he just wasn't that kind of person. So let me ask, what do you think that um, Hu Jintao, if we take the long view, like 50 years down the road, what will people think of his time? Well, for the past 10 years, um, human rights and a lot of civic rights basically backtracked under Hu Jintao's reign. So that's something that you know is going to, to go against him. But he also did achieve a lot economically. But when you look at things, uh, an overall picture, there was a lot of missed opportunities for him to really bring China f much more forward than he could have. Right, I agree, I agree. Basically, it's like, a, but uh, at the end of this whole thing, he did something, like he's uh, uh, the first leader uh, gave up all the power at the end of his uh, kind of uh, term. And uh, this may be something positive, but uh, whether this can be real kind of realized in the future, for example, uh, will, when he gave up all, all his power, will Jiang Zemin also give up uh, his power influence in the future? This is the question we have to see. If uh, he give up all his power and Jiang Zemin try to maintain his influence, uh, then everything kind of he did is in vain. He even having this kind of uh, uh, so-called positive impact is, uh, is disappearing. So do you think he did it on purpose, gave up the Central Military Commission? Um, I think he did it on purpose. For one reason is uh, he just personally don't want to be in that position. And he just kind of feel like uh, he was put in that position out of his will, and then now it's time to give it up. And of course, uh, the, he won't use that as a kind of a, a bargaining chip to really make sure Jiang also gave up his influence. But whether this can be achieved is still a question. So do you think Jiang agreed to give up his influence if who gave up this Central Military Commission? I don't think he see uh, the 
the essence of the Jiang's uh, struggle on the power. Jiang kind of tried to kind of uh, grab the power because uh, he do have blood on his hands. He his family do have a huge kind of uh, corruption kind of uh, secret. So so there is a strong will for Jiang to maintain the power. This is something who didn't really see it. So if we look at kind of uh, lessons for the next leadership, lessons from Xi, for Xi Jinping or whatever, from Hu Jintao's example, what would you say? I would really say that Xi Jinping needs to realize that his responsibility isn't to the Communist Party. I mean, no dynasty lasts forever. Things will change, <clears throat> but China as a whole will move forward. So he needs to realize that he really needs to be a leader for the Chinese people instead of the Communist Party. So you're saying become kind of a Gorbachev? If, if you can. Right. I think... Uh, um, everyone knows no party will last forever, but of course the people, the country will last much, much longer. And uh, right now, since the ideology of the commun communism in China is already kind of uh, clearly we face it, I mean, it's died. I mean, nobody really believed it. Even Jiang Zemin saying like uh, only when he was young, he believed it. And so there is nothing uh, ideology kind of wise people can kind of uh, drive them to support the party. And uh, it's just kind of a, a party to kind of try to grab money uh, from the society. So for this reason, the party will collapse soon. In this sense, if Xi won't put himself in the right position in the history, and at the end of his term, he will not have a tear in his eyes. If he don't want to repeat what uh, Hu Jintao did, what he should do is try to think about what's the best thing for the people there, what's the best thing for the country, or what's the best thing for the world. And then he will be recognized by the people, recognized by the world. And, and then he will, at the end of the, his term, he will smile instead of in the, have some kind of a loss of feeling over there. Well, thank you both for giving us your analysis on uh, Hu Jintao and the tears in his eyes. And thank you for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.